Welcome to lesson 17 of module three. Uh, we are going to take a look at a multiplication table today and use that to help us identify some patterns in multiplication and division. Uh, just like we've done uh, in the last couple of le lessons, uh, these are gonna help you be able to check your work. They're gonna be able to help you understand if your answers make sense or not, uh, and give you some, some really quick uh, ways of figuring out if you're on the right track when you're solving multiplication and division facts. Um, so let me, I've taken a chance to uh, get set up ahead of time here and I've drawn a partial uh, multiplication grid. So I didn't go all the way to 10, I only went to seven, but I think that that will be enough to, uh, to highlight this for you. So let's see here. We're gonna start filling this in. And um, one times one is one. This, this part is gonna be a little redundant. I, but I promise you it has a purpose. Uh, one times two is two, one times three is three, and I'm just gonna fill out the ones for you. And I'll do that going along the top row too. So one times two is two, one times three is three, and then we'll keep going. Okay, now I come down here to two times two is four, two times three is six, two times four is eight, two times five is 10, two times six is 12 and two times seven is 14. And those same answers are true going down. Six, eight, 10, 12, and 14. Then I move on to my threes fact. So three times three, that answer goes in that square. It's a nine. Three times four is 12. Three times five is 15. Three times six is 18. So again, notice I have the three here and the six here, and I'm sort of coming together and putting the answer where those two with a column in the row meet. And then three times seven is 21. Again, I go all the way across here and then until I get to the seventh uh, column and make those line up. Uh, and we'll go down three times four is 12, three times five is 15, three times six is 18, and three times seven is 21. All right, we're getting there, we're almost done. Uh, we go to our fours facts. Uh, four times four is 16. Four times five is 20. Four times six is 24. Four times seven is 28. Uh, five times five is 25. Five times six is 30. And five times seven is 35. And those same answers are true. Uh, if you look at the fifth column and multiply by the sixth row, you get 30 and five times seven is 35. And then we're just left with four. So we have six times six is 36, six times seven is 42. Uh, and over here, six times seven is also 42. And finally, our last one, seven times seven is 49. All right, we've got that filled out. And we're gonna take a look at some patterns here. So I'm going to, ideally I would have a highlighter in this thing. Let's see. We're gonna find that and okay, perfect. That's gonna work. So anything that is an even number, I'm gonna shade in. Let's see if I can even do it in a little bit darker color or more, more obvious color. So uh, anything that's even, I'm going to shade in. So two is even, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do these ones first because I noticed that they're in this whole row, they're all even. Uh, six, 12. those are all even, okay. And I notice up here I have even, oh, look, this whole column's even. Uh, I also noticed that all right, nothing in that column, but this whole column is even, the four. All right, in my five column, nothing else here. And my six column, oh, the rest of that is all even as well. And then nothing remaining in my seventh column is even. Hmm, interesting. You notice that I have like a row, entire rows and entire columns 
that are even. Let's let's explore a little bit with that and see if we can find a pattern. So if I have, I don't know, let's pick um, two times one. That equals two, so that's even. And that was odd, that factor was odd, that factor was even. Hmm. Okay, good to know, keep that in mind. Let's try another one, uh, two times two. Two times two equals four. Well, that's even and both factors were even. Okay, let's try, uh, that's the only way we get can get even ones. Let's see how we get an odd one. Um, we'll use one times three. One, I'll do this in a different color because this one comes out, whoops. This one comes out uh, to be different. So one times three equals three. Three is odd and both factors are odd. So the only way to get an odd product is to get two odd factors. So if you have two odd numbers being multiplied together, you will get an odd, um, an odd product. So odd times odd equals odd. So if you multiply uh, one times seven, it's gonna be odd. You multiply seven times seven, it's going to be odd. We can check that here. Seven times seven is 49, it ends in a nine, which is an odd number. Uh, seven times three. So three times seven, both odd numbers, they multiply to 21, which is an odd number. If you multiply an even by an even, you get even. So any even number multiplied by any other even number is going to result in an even number. Six times four is 24. Four is even, uh, it's the last digit in 24. So two even numbers multiply to another even number. And then last, the one that, uh, you know, those two usually make sense against. The last one is even times odd equals even. So if you have, the only way to get an odd product is to have two odd factors. If you have one even factor, your product is going to be even. So um, this one is even times odd equals even. So anytime you have an even factor, that is going to make it certain that your product is going to be even. Now you might say to yourself, uh, interesting, Mr. Bernal, why is this helpful to me? Well, it's helpful because as I always tell you, you need to check your work. So if you're in class or if you're doing an exit ticket or a problem set or whatever, and you're multiplying, I don't know, five times four and you get the answer 21, you instantly can know that you need to recheck your work because that is an even times an odd and you got an odd answer. And you, you know from this pattern we just identified that that answer should have been even because you multiplied an even by an odd and you should get an even number. So instantly it sets off like a little red flag for you that you need to go back and check that work. And that is uh, how this can really be helpful to you. Now there's something else I wanna show you here and um, it's about square numbers and square numbers are, um, let me highlight in a different color here. Square numbers are, we, got, we have a very colorful, uh, lesson today. Square numbers are when you literally make a square, like, like one times one is a square. It's anytime you're multiplying two of the same uh, factors together. Two times two is four. See how I made a square there? Like two times two is four. Three times three is nine. That's a square. You have the same number of, the, uh, both sides are the same length, like three on one side, three on the other side, all the sides are the same. Four times four is 16. Five times five is 25. Again, these are called square numbers. You're making squares on your, on your grid here. Six times six is 36. So if I go down six and across six, the number, right here in the corner is 36. 
and seven by seven is 49. Okay, we're getting really colorful on this on this uh, multiplication grid here. So let's just roll with that. And I'm going to color in, oops, the one, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, and 49. Notice they go in a diagonal line. Well, I guess for you it's that way. Um, they go in a diagonal line, and those are your square numbers. They're, they're when you multiply the same, um, two of the same factors together. So square number equals two of the same factors multiplied together. And it literally makes a square. Like if you if you made an array, with those two, it may it forms a square, just like I, I sort of outlined here. And you notice that uh, that alternates an even and an odd pattern. So one times one is two odd numbers being multiplied together, and the product is one. Two times two is two even numbers being multiplied together, and that is four. So that's an even product. Then you go to three times three. That's two odd numbers being multiplied together. We know that that's going to result in an odd product and so on and so forth. Uh, there's one other cool sort of thing that you can do with this. Uh, and that is um, if you want to find, let's see, if you want to find like the third, um, like three times three, right? So if you want to find what three times three is, then you can add up the first three odd numbers and get that result. So one plus three plus five, those are the first three odd numbers. One plus three is four, plus five more is nine. So if you're looking for the, um, the fourth square number, you still add up the first four odd numbers. So one plus three plus five plus seven, we'll do seven plus five is 12, plus three more is 15, plus one more is 16, the answer is 16. Now. Personally, I prefer that you uh, just learn those multiplication facts, but if you're, it's a cool trick to know, right? You could always uh, impress other people by telling them, look, I can, uh, I can figure out what six times six is by adding up the first six odd numbers, one plus three plus five plus seven plus nine plus 11 and get 36. Um, it's cool, nice trick to know, good way to double check your work. Um, uh, but I would say that the things that I really want you to understand the most out of this lesson are that pattern with the evens and odds and uh, what results as a product. Uh, again, even times odd is even, even times even is even, and odd times odd is odd. That's really something that's important to remember. It's a good way to double check your work. I also want to introduce you and, and uh, help you understand what square numbers are. Those are the numbers that if you made an array out of them or if you identified them here on uh, a multiplication grid that um, you're multiplying two of the same products, uh, I'm sorry, factors, and your uh, the product um, forms like a, a square in the, uh, when you make the array or when you draw it on the, on the thing, uh, a multiplication grid. Uh, I also um, um, introduced to you uh, that thing that we could find the uh, products of our uh, square numbers by adding up um, odd numbers, again, semi-useful trick. Of the three things I taught you today, certainly the third most important. Um, square numbers are the things that you'll hear, hear the most often in your math uh, future, uh, but also using this, uh, this pattern with the evens and odds and finding the products is something that is going to be able to help you um, uh, throughout your math career. Though I will admit that I was not, I never really gave much thought to this until I became a third grade teacher. Uh, I did make it through uh, the rest of my life without understanding this, uh, without uh, not understanding it, recognizing it. I had never really given it much thought. So you guys are way ahead of me because you now know it uh, many years before I ever figured it out in my own life. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to put it to good use moving forward as mathematicians. Uh, the only other thing you're gonna be asked to do today, um, it comes up on your exit ticket is solve, um, well, there's, there's two things. Uh, solve something like um, 16 times four. 
right? And we've done this before. We have a bunch of different strategies for working with this. Uh, and, and you might think of that, and I think this is on your exit ticket, where we'll say to think of this as eight, oops, eight fours time, or um, sorry, plus, plus eight fours. So that's just saying that you can, you know, a bunch of lessons ago we did this. We took 16 times four and we turned that into eight times four plus eight times four, All right? Um, and then you would take this and you say 32 plus 32. I'm really hoping I'm not giving you the exact same problem that's on your exit ticket, but if I am, at least I'll be able to tell who watched the video today. And that would equal 64. Um, so that's, you can do it that way. Another way to do this would have been um, 16 times four, you break this apart into like um, two times eight times four, and then do that and you turn it into eight times eight, which equals 64. So that's another strategy that we've used as well. So that's one other thing you'll be asked to do today. And the last thing, here, I'll keep it on this page. I'll just draw a line through, is you'll be asked like, um, 671 times seven. And you'll be asked if that's even or odd. And I'm not asking you to solve those problems and neither is the problem set or or if it's on the exit ticket, which I don't think it is. Um, I can, I'm not asking you to solve what that actually is. I'm just saying, is it even or odd? And I can tell you right now it's odd because odd number, odd number. Right, and so two odd numbers multiplied together equals an odd number, uh, and so that's uh, what you're gonna gonna be working on. You'll probably see that in the context of, uh, you know, Joe says that 671 times seven is even, and uh, Jack says that it's odd. Who's right and why? Uh, one of those sort of problems where you have to compare two points of view. So um, that will be your task today. Uh, We'll, we'll meet in class and talk about this as well. So please come prepared with any questions and we can go over them. Keep working hard.